our project is that uh, so far is that we've got this PG uh, welcome and we click here we get PG sign up we'll fill this in in a moment and then we've got login PG login we'll fill that out eventually then uh, you're supposed to be able to go through your login and that'll take you to PG home so there's no way to go to PG home yet unless you add a simple button to do that I would recommend it for testing purposes but what we're gonna do at the moment is start to set up our sign up screen this is where we're going to create uh, visually uh, the screen that will allow a person to sign up for an account now we're only going to be able to create the visual aspect of the mo of it at the moment we will then uh, of course then add the functionality that will actually make that work and that's going to be JavaScript so we'll, we'll set up some of the basic structure then the functionality let's go back to our PG sign up so wherever your section of PG sign up is and inside of the article which for me is at about line 30 we're going to then set up a way for a person to sign up we want to ask um, this is all going to be tied together via a person's email and a password we can of course make it more complex by asking first name and your email and your age and all that great stuff but we're gonna make it very simple very straightforward in that an email plus a password is all that you need to create an account later on we will set it up so that it actually logs you in and all that good stuff but this is going to be um, an input element various input elements of a form so let's create a form element we played with forms when we created that name and you typed in your name and it said welcome name and your favorite hobby is whatever well it's gonna be a form and this is gonna need also an ID so that we can reference it via the JavaScript we'll call this form form uh, sign up I think when we were practicing this last time I called it FM sign up that would be fine but remember that I said if you kind of spell it out a little longer it might be better especially as a beginner you might not realize or remember what does FM stand for again so I'm gonna make it obvious by having form PG sign up could have been page sign up but because we're using more screens than forms I think it's a better short shorthand so form sign up uh, we're going to need uh, we're going to ask for the person's email password and confirm password this is simply text I haven't added any markup I haven't given these things any meaning but I'm gonna ask for the person's email password and to confirm the password these things that will appear on screen will be labels so I want to wrap a label around each of those so email will be a label visible to the person password will need label and confirm password will also need label something visible to the person and then the actual input fields uh, when we practiced with forms last time we had the label and the input field on the same line that was fine but then I think it starts to get a little hard to read so I'm gonna actually put the input below the label this will all work the same on screen they will be on the same line I think and that'll be fine but just for the code here for readability this input is visually related to that label because it's indented 
But obviously, to actually relate them via code, that's when we had for attribute and name attribute. This label is going to be used for something named something. And last time we did input type and then name. Now I'm going to do input name, then type. That doesn't quite matter. That order of those attributes doesn't quite matter. Other things in other orders definitely matter, and I'll point them out. Uh, but here, just to kind of make it make sense, whenever I'm going to create a form, I need a label, and I need an input, and they need to be linked. So I need a for and a name attribute. Just to make it very obvious, I'm writing them in this order. This label is going to be used for this input with a name <coughs> of in for input email sign up. This is another example of a really long, uniquely named attribute that others may shorten it, like the three letters. And that'd be fine if you remember what those three letters stand for. For and name should be the same. This label is being used for this input with this name. Based on that naming scheme, I'm going to do the same thing for the next ones. For name for name. The syntax, the way you write these languages, it can be very rigid, which can be good, because you know what to expect or what to write. As a beginner, you don't know what to write. But as you are learning from this class, from other tutorials, from books, etc., you see this commonality and this repetition of many computer languages. OK, I'm going to call this one in password sign up. And the reason I'm also, so I've got kind of two things going on here in my mind. I've got a prefix of in because it's an input. It's email. And then a suffix, which is at the end of sign up, because I'm going to also have input your email when you log in. And input your email, I put in your input your password when you log in. Well, this is inputting your email, inputting your password when you sign up. They are different fields in different parts <coughs> of the app, and they should have different unique names. In password sign up. It's an input requesting a password in the sign up screen. So again, a long word. <coughs> and each one of those words, each one of those letters takes up a byte, and bytes add up to kilobytes and megabytes and all of that. Ultimately, as I recall last semester, ultimately by the third month, our whole project folder ended up being about 100 megabytes. But when it's then compressed to actually be published to the app, it compressed down to like one and a half megabytes. 1,000 megabytes is a gigabyte. So 100 megabytes or so by the end of the three months in our work in progress folder. But then when it's all compressed and ready to go to the app store, it was only about one and a half megabytes. <clears throat> so in password sign up, um, in password confirm sign up. Or anything we want to call them, of course, but. Logically, for me, what would make sense is in password confirm sign up. And be careful, you, you write sign up and not sing up. I do that all the time. I accidentally write the G or the N backwards and I write sing up and then it doesn't work. And then I have to follow my trail back. Oh, I wrote sing up instead of sign up. And if you wrote it once correctly, copy and paste. Even if you wrote it once, once incorrectly, Copy and pasting may actually work. That's the funny thing that if you misspell the same thing 10 times, it's not an error. 
if it's used the same way 10 times wrong, it's not an error. Especially for something <clears throat> unique like this, a unique for or a unique name or unique ID. If I'm making it up and I'm calling it confirm sing up and I use confirm sing up all through my 1000 lines, it's not an error. So that is going to be in password confirm sign up. Let's take a quick look at it in the browser. There's still a few more things to add, but let's see if we're on the right track so far. Let's see on mine. So I, I usually like to either refresh from the home screen or just run it brand new instead of a refresh from inside of the screen so that I can then fully test it. I'm in welcome. I go to sign up. There's sign up. I see some inputs already. Email, password. OK, so they do separate themselves onto different lines, and that's because jQuery Mobile is in effect. When we created our app, I mean, our, our very quick basic database thing, or whatever we call it, name retrieval system, um, when we had them on the same line, they were on the same line because we, we just had plain old HTML. Just because this input is on a new line does not mean it automatically will be on a new line. It's on a new line here because we're also using jQuery Mobile. And it looks like by default, it will put the label in one uh, line and the input in its own line. OK, so at the moment, this will accept any input. Is that a real email address? What about that? It's in the syntax. Exactly, it's in the syntax of an email address. So I want to set this up so that it will only accept email address inputs. I don't want a person to put in, you know, like that. I want an email. So we can set our type of input field to only accept emails. Going back to our first input here, we will input new attribute of type email, one word, no dash. Previously, we did text. So any kind of text, even numbers or symbols, would have worked. I want to refine it a little bit more and do a little bit of this sort of user what's it, uh, data validation. Uh, I only want certain valid data to be typed in here. E email addresses. I also want to give an example to people what they should type. It never hurts to be a little obvious, especially to new users. So we'll have a placeholder text. So make up any email address here. So we're going to have some uh, email address automatically typed into this input field as a placeholder. And it's normal. This is a bug or a quirk in Notepad++. Placeholder doesn't change color like the other attributes do. So it's OK that that one remains the original color. <coughs> to do a little quick test. So that's filled in automatically. At the moment, I can type anything here. And when I click elsewhere, it'll highlight, please enter an email address. Depending on the browser, depending on the device, they'll get different feedback that says, this should have been an email address. So try typing something and then moving out of that box. And it should give you some sort of feedback that that wasn't the right type. As soon as I type it in, in the right format, something at something dot something, it should then think of it enough of it being an email, and it'll say, OK, great, that's an email. Even though I don't think there's a .cor, it's in the format. This won't fully you know, fix any user errors.
email is an important requirement for a person to create an account. Therefore, this input field should be required that they fill it in. So we have attribute required. Required. And lastly, an ID, which will be the same name and for attribute of in email sign up. The ID is the purpose of either being used for CSS styling as a way to latch on to that element to style it, or more commonly, and for us, a way for JavaScript to be able to latch on to what's in that box. Let's use our JavaScript to see what they typed into the box and do something with it. So the ID can be used for CSS or JavaScript. And I recommend, this is completely aesthetics, and I recommend this, and I teach this in this class, so if you do, if you do this in different ways in other classes, that's great. But if you're brand new, I'm going to mold you into my own clay. So I'm going to say, I recommend to always have the ID as the last attribute. If you ever need to use an ID, always make it the last attribute. And that's completely me telling you the, the Victor style of programming, JavaScript. Because you often have to refer to these IDs in JavaScript. And if you've got it somewhere in the middle of a line of code, it takes you a couple of extra seconds to find it, to find it in your line of code. If it's the last item, you know exactly where to go. You know where to scan your code to find the input, end of the line, there it is. If it's anywhere else within the line, yeah, you take a half a second, but again, all those half seconds add up. And so this is completely me recommending you. Always have your ID as the last item in your, as the last attribute. And we did it over here too, I didn't mention it yet, when we did section, data role, ID. And wherever we're going to use IDs, form ID, it was the last item. But if I needed to add one more attribute, like, um, what's the one here, um, action, I think, I would add action, don't add action, but I would add action before ID. So just my recommendation, always do your ID as the last attribute. For password, we need to do, we need to do similar things input it's got a name it's got a type and we actually have a type password this will accept the password what it really only does is it covers what the person types you see that right when you log in and the password becomes little stars or little bullet points input of type password will do that it will hide what the person is typing like a password box Technically, anything can be typed into it, but it'll just hide it from prying eyes. We don't need a uh, placeholder. I guess we could put a placeholder. Uh, does, I'm not sure if it actually displays. Just, let me just try this really fast. Placeholder. Cats. That's my password. Don't look at my password. Oh, okay, good. So it will show password as a possible. It will show cats as a possible password. But then, as you start typing, it'll it'll hide itself. So I guess you could show the password here to kind of also guide people. Type your password with uppercases and dashes, and you know keep it secure. If you want to put a placeholder, you could. I'm not going to, but you could put a placeholder. But it is required. We need an ID here. Same ID as name and for. In password. This is a case where I would copy and paste it. I don't want to mess up. I know I can easily also mistype. Might as well copy and paste. Again, if it's consistently wrong, it's not really wrong. I just copied the one I typed before and I pasted it in. I don't want to write sing up here. And I wrote sign up there.
confirm password, pretty much exactly the same. Input type, password, required, ID, in, password, confirm, sign up. Here's an example of copying and pasting all of that. And let me show that this shortcut actually with selecting. It's very common to, with the mouse, click and drag. I'm going to select all of this, but obviously if your hand goes too low, you catch the line below it. If you go too high, you catch the line above it. You have to put it exactly there. But what I love to do instead is you can select from the keyboard. Now if you're not used to it, I really recommend to get used to using the arrow keys on the keyboard. By the time we're in the third month, I will be dying inside when you pick up your mouse to move your cursor from here to here. Because I really want you to learn how to use the arrow keys to move around your code. Up, down, left, right, page up, page down. I think that's a lot more efficient for real programming than moving your mouse. Because if your hand is already at the keyboard typing, yes, the half second to move to the mouse and then the half second to move across the screen <coughs> adds up. So with the arrow keys, okay, moving over. Well, that seems slow. The secret is if you hold control arrow keys, it jumps one word at a time. No matter the length of the word, it jumps to the next word. Holding control and arrow left, arrow right, jumps you a whole word. And oh, look at that. Control up and down scrolls the screen up and down. So holding control, you move left and right. Selecting without holding control, if I hold shift, press to the right, I selected one letter. Keep pressing to the right, I'm selecting. Superpower move, control, shift, arrows, selects a whole word. That's what I'm doing all the time. That's how I'm doing it so fast. I'm not moving my hand over to the mouse. I'm rem remembering these keyboard shortcuts. You might have never used them in your life, and it'll take a while to remember them. But arrow keys, left and right. Control arrow keys, left and right. Jump you, left and right. And then shift arrow keys, one letter at a time, selection. Or control shift arrow keys, whole words at a time. And that's how I quickly select all of that. Control C copy, two arrow clicks down, control V paste. Instead of moving my mouse, selecting, I missed, try again, right click, copy, move down, right click, I missed, try again, right click, paste, arrow keys. Up and down. My arrow key, I mean my <coughs> cursor, is right here. I somehow want to get to the end of the line quickly. If only there was a button for that. Oh, look, on the keyboard there is. Right on the keyboard, in this little island that a lot of people might not use, insert home, page up, delete, end, page down. My cursor is currently in the middle of the line. I press end, it's at the end of the line. I press home, it's at the beginning of the line. Well, one more home and all the way to the beginning. Well, the reason for that is then, if you combine shift and end it selects the whole line from wherever your cursor is to the end so again by the third month if you're still clicking and dragging <laughs> I'm gonna be dying inside because copy that paste that select up here paste that here Pro. That takes practice, but I hope within the final you know, weeks you can get that. So that whole spiel was for me to select the type, password, required, and ID, and quickly copy it, then select or arrows in password, confirm, sign up.
The last thing we want to do is a submit button. I'm pressing end to jump to the end of the line. I'm pressing enter. I've got a new line. Input doesn't need a label, needs a type. Submit. Value is what will appear on screen and will say join. It could be go, it could be save, it could be submit. If you don't put out any value, I think it generically says submit query. Well, by putting a value, it will put it, it will write exactly what we want in that button. And um, if you wanted to clear those fields to start over, input type reset, value clear, cancel, or whatever value, clear, start over, uh-oh. That makes sense to me that uh-oh means start over, but for someone coming to my app for the first time, what does uh-oh mean? Delete the app or something? I don't know. So again, be careful how you... Uh, be careful about always thinking only in the from the terms of from the other side of the app. You have to think about people from that side of the app as well. Let's see, running that. Sign up. Get all of that. I could put in icons. There's no functionality at the moment yet. Clearly, this confirmed password is shorter than the other password. There's no functionality for that yet. These buttons, I could have icons here. Uh, I'll just do it simply like this up to this point. But here's the input. Here's the whole form for a signing up. It doesn't do anything yet. If you try to type stuff in, uh, it doesn't really sign you in yet. The minimum that you can sort of test it is, you know, if I if I type in whatever and then whatever and whatever, and I try to click join or press enter, it'll tell me, well, my email. That's not an email. Okay, I'll put in an email. That's not an email. And then I'll put a password here that's clearly doesn't can, doesn't match. I'll say great. Okay, it's not smart enough yet to really check the password. We'll get to that, of course. Um, if you try to clear it, you should clear it. So right there, I type the exact same password. Click join. Doesn't really work yet. It's supposed to go to the home screen. Not really. We haven't programmed it to do that yet. We're going to uh, create the login screen in a moment, then we'll do lab time. Uh, but at the very least, we've got this screen here, the, the visuals of it, but not the uh, functionality of it yet. The login for the form will be very similar, but a little simpler. In the login screen, it's going to ask two things, their email and password not a third confirmation because it assumes you know your password. So we could copy and paste, but we'll have to remove a lot. So we'll just write it manually. Over in the login screen, we need a new form with a new ID, one new label, one new input for email, and one new label and one new input for password, and a submit button. So again, this is the part like 50-50, copying and pasting and changing it, or writing it over. I don't recommend the copy and paste because you're going to have to change too much. These input names, at least like six times, um, 
depending on your typing speed, that might not be so bad. I'm going to write it from the beginning, from scratch. So let's go to the login screen and create another form. Practice ID equals form login. Again, I'm using my syntax that I made up. Everything that's a form will be prefixed with form. I'm calling it login because I'm in the screen login. I'm going to ask for a person's email and password. Both of those will be labels. Both will be inputs. Both will have also inputs in, this, in the exact same sort of syntax I wrote above. So yeah, I'm going to do it fast, but logically it's exactly what we did above. Labels related to inputs. They're related because there's forms and name, uh, there's fours and names <clears throat> in email login. Remember that internal syntax that I made up? <clears throat> in it's an input asking for email login screen. Copy and paste that to make sure it's consistent. <coughs> Label for in password log in. Connect it to an input with name in password login. I'm going to create an input field that is required of type email, placeholder example, ID for JavaScript purposes, exactly as the name and the for. So type of email required. Now I guess I did placeholder first. ID, pretty long line, in email login, copying and pasting to avoid errors. Password login is of type password required. You can put a placeholder if you want. Needs an ID. And then we've got our submit. I'm going to skip the clear button. You could if you want. It's only two things that are being filled in, name and password, with the extra clear button. Maybe not necessary. And at the moment, each of those buttons takes up the whole width. I would like them side by side. That'll be a way, there, there is a way to put the buttons side by side if we use a grid and such. We'll use grids from jQuery Mobile, but we'll do it next time probably. So I just want a simple si sign in. Uh, I'm going to call this um, an input of submit value go. <coughs> so after they fill those items, input, type submit value go. You're going to type a password, an email, both are required. They click go. In theory, that should take them to the PG welcome. Once it's fully programmed, right now, not yet, it doesn't know. There's no system to save these names and passwords and to validate them yet. 
there's no no way for it to actually go where it's supposed to via this way. to log in, email and password, non-valid email gives me a little error, any sort of password, go, enter email, any password, go, has not been programmed to validate passwords yet, so it doesn't really do what we want yet, but we just want the visuals at the moment. If I put a clear button, I can clear it out and start over like I had over here. Question. There might be something else going on. I'll check with you in a moment in the lab time, but just confirm that your go button is, confirm that your input type of submit is within the form. If you've got it outside of the form, that might cause that issue, but if it's not there, I'll, I'll check you in a moment. Hmm, okay, let me try it on mine too. I, I'm gonna switch over to Chrome for a moment. Let's let me check that too. Sign up, fill in an email. Okay. Okay, that's fine. If you see an error loading, one of the things that we'll do eventually, very soon, is Right now, the behavior is it's expecting to go to another screen, but we haven't <coughs> defined the screen, so it says error loading page. So via the JavaScript, we will fully then set it up so that it actually goes where it needs to. So if anyone does get their error loading page, that's normal, because we haven't fully programmed it. I was using Firefox, and I didn't think to check in Chrome. Different behavior, same language. And that's what we have to deal with when we then get to iPhone, and Android, and Samsung, and LG. We have to deal with different dialects of the same language. If yours worked at this point, great. If not, we'll do a little lab time. I'm going to put my code into the folder in just a moment. Raise your hand if it kind of worked like mine. A few people. Good. Okay, if it didn't, we'll do lab time. If it did work, uh, you can keep practicing or whatever. And uh, if it didn't work, call me over. Let me put my code into the folder, and that's it for the main lecture at this point.